Seppers, welcome to this episode. <laughs> so the reason I'm I'm laughing off the top like that is because um, I really mug myself off there. I normally have a wee table beside me. Go, go to the video version of this podcast if you don't already watch it for that moment um, where I really mug myself off. I, I, I usually have a wee table beside the sofa that I record the podcast on and um, <laughs> I've moved the table. By the way, this is such like lockdown banter that I'm actually laughing at that. If this happened normally, it wouldn't be funny to me. But yeah, I normally have a table there. I forgot the table wasn't there. Went to set my tea down. And uh, I mean, it would have been more embarrassing if I had to just dropped the cup and I'd had it smashed. But uh, but what happened is I kept feeling for the table and I just kept going down and down and had to set my tea on the ground. And uh, and I, I, I'll be honest, I wish that hadn't happened. I really wish that hadn't happened right at the top of the episode. But we're just going to move on. We're going to roll with it because that's what you got to do in lockdown. you got to roll with it. You know, blur. Um, guys, it's a it's it's a big episode for the sippers. This is the the Wednesday episode of the podcast. You know, by now we do a Wednesday episode, a Friday episode, and if you're if you're if you're a big sipper on a Monday, you get the Patreon episode, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. You get that bonus Monday podcast. Oh, you greedy buggers, sip sip. Uh, today in 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 this episode. I've got Jamie Lee O'Donnell from Dairy Girls on the podcast, which is great for a number of reasons. Number one, so many people asked, whenever I put out the call for guests, so many people asked, can you get Jamie Lee O'Donnell from Dairy Girls? And we we have done it. We have done it. So um, I couldn't believe, you'll see from the chat I have with her, but I couldn't believe this is the first, I think the first podcast that, that she's done. And you, you really wouldn't know. Just very, very easy to chat to. Do you know what? We're just... We're having a great run of guests that are just so sound, so easy to chat to, and uh, you know, I think I've said before, I don't prepare anything from this podcast. I mean, a lot of people listen and go, "No, we're we're acutely aware of that that's obvious by the podcast," but I I don't like to plan stuff because, like, just having a a chat with a cup of tea, you know, you just you just chat about anything. You find yourself going down different avenues. So yes, I asked Jamie Lee some questions about about Dairy Girls and and how that sort of changed changed her life, but but we ended up chatting about a lot of different things, including Andy Peters' torso, uh, and that's that's what I want from this podcast. You know, ultimately I want to talk about Andy Peters' physique, the TV presenter Andy Peters, but it was um it was it was really good, just re- really really down to earth person. Very easy to chat to. Cl- clearly works hard, and and um, I think people will uh, will really enjoy this episode. I certainly record uh, enjoy. I certainly enjoyed recording it. Okay, and that was a sentence that I found very very difficult to say, and that's why I'm I'm not a successful actor because I can't say words, and also because I think tables are there when they're not. All right, unless that is that is what someone needs for an actor. You know, in a role, if someone's like, "Listen, we got this film," but this this guy, this I'm like, "Tell me more about the character." Well, this guy always thinks there's there's tables and places that there's not. You know, in which case, I I'm essentially the a young Mister Bean, young Bean, that's me. Um, it was a, it was a real fun episode. Before we get into it, before we get into the episode, which I don't really I didn't really say this in the episode. Because, as I say, we go off on tangents and we ended up talking about a million and one different things. Um, Dairy Girls is very, very important to someone like me, a, a, a writer, comedy performer from uh, from Northern Ireland. Because for years, years and years, like I've been trying to get stuff made, like TV and all that, for, for so long. And, um, and it's... it's it's on like a, I think it's on a good path now, but for a long time you feel like you're banging your head against the brick wall. And a lot of that was because anything that you saw on TV, you know, especially comedy, it, it, it was coming from middle class England, you know, like London. Um, the, and, and there was very little, obviously you'd have exceptions like Gavin and Stacey, but there was very little stuff coming out of what... Um, TV people call the nations and regions. So like Northern Ireland is considered uh, like a region or whatever, and and there there's not much from here on like network TV. You know, like Channel Four 
or like the main BBC channels. Obviously, we we have our own stuff on the likes of BBC Northern Ireland, something I'm part of. But but there, there's been nothing that's really broken through from here in a long time or maybe ever and certainly nothing like Derry Girls so whenever Derry Girls went on to Channel 4 and and just blew up from from the from the day it was on TV it kind of just exploded and that's mad because you see so many shows that are out for a while and then people go you've been sleeping on this you need to watch this you know it's been out for ages you have to check it out uh, like Ozark at the minute like Ozark I enjoyed the first couple of series and I don't watch it anymore Still think it's a really good show, but I just don't really watch it. But now there's so many people getting into that because of lockdown. They're like, you got to check out this show. Derry Girls, from the night that it went out, was a hit. Just in what certainly felt like from when it was broadcast and overnight success. And that was brilliant to see for so many reasons. For the fact that it it's from here, you know, writ- written by Lisa McGee, who's a, a local writer. Um... It, 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 it's cast, we're, we're from here as well, I've been to Derry, you know what I mean, and know people from Derry, and all of a sudden, that world is being represented on, like, a global scale, because Derry Girls isn't just big here in uh, UK and Ireland, it's, it's big all over the place, you know, American people know about it, people know about it in France, name a country, Uganda, I mean, I'm sure there's someone in Uganda who absolutely loves it, um, but it's important because for me, like trying to get stuff made on TV or write scripts, all of a sudden I can go, well, look, they've, they've done it. You know, they've, Derry Girls almost opened the door, I think, for a lot of stuff. And I, I definitely noticed from speaking to some TV people that they all of a sudden are way more interested in the stuff that's coming out of here. Like we did a thing for Channel 4 that Kieran Bartlett wrote, Kieran Bartlett, a.k.a. Bunter Castles. Um, Kieran wrote a thing for Channel 4, I acted in it, Dave, El- you, you know Dave, Dave was in it, a couple other of our friends, and uh, and it, it did really well, now coronavirus kind of scuppered its development of it, but they are still hoping that that could maybe go on Channel 4, and I don't think that would have happened for a long time if it wasn't for Derry, I feel like Derry Girls just accelerated all of that and made people way more interested in what's coming from here, you know, all of a sudden, commissioners and stuff were like well what, what do you have going on over there you know and all of a sudden we're like we have all this good stuff and people are way more interested in it so it it really has opened the door for so many people and and so many shows and um and it's it's great it's a, it, it really is a cultural phenomenon you know and and it has done what everybody kind of wants to do which is yes it is based here it's filmed here it's about here it's about a very specific place. Like Derry is almost like its own world. Like I'm, I'm from Hollywood, which is close to Belfast. Belfast and Derry are really different in terms of the expressions people use, all that kind of stuff. Um, they feel like their own, their own places. But that humor is able to translate everywhere, and uh, that's that's the goal. I think that that is a serious achievement, and that's because of the the writing and the acting in the show, and. Um, and Jamie Lee steals so many scenes. Absolutely brilliant comedy timing. Such a such a great character. That must have been a real fun character to play. And and it was great to be able to just sit down, chat a bit about Derry Girls because I have my perceptions of what it would be like to be in a show like that. Um, how I imagine it 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 would change her life. So I wanted to ask her questions about that. And then we talked, as I say, about really stupid stuff. So hope you guys enjoy it. I'll be back on uh, Friday with a solo episode, and then we'll have a guest next Wednesday, and we'll just we'll just keep doing it like that. The Patreon episode is out on a Monday. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast for, uh, for a bonus episode. I know where the tea is this time. As I go down to pick it up. Just took me a long time to get it because it's on the floor. This is the Jamie Lee O'Donnell episode of the Team and Me podcast. Cheers, guys. My first question is always, do you drink tea? How often do you drink tea? How many cups of tea do you drink a day? Do you take sugar with your tea? You you haven't started with tea in your hand. I don't know if you're if there's a tea off camera or whatever. There's a glass of water. So you're, are you not a... It's okay if you're not. Like, you know, it's not going to... No, I am, but it's... I don't just don't have a cup of tea. Oh, yeah. I no, 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 no. Don't worry. Don't worry. Have a mug and like fake it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, I just. Keep it natural. I just, um, 
I just like to find out what people's tea situation is just because yeah you know it's tea with me i think tea brings people together so like how many cups would you be on a day so i used to never drink caffeine it just wasn't my thing at all um so i've started drinking just like a cup of tea in the morning it's like a wee routine mm-hmm. and when i say morning i obviously use that term very loosely let's be honest yeah. it's still it's still daytime you know yeah. what i mean cup of tea well, and then I might have a wee coffee on there to see because I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing at the moment uh, I wanna say, again I want to say a lot we're using these <laughs> these time frames yeah, I, do a page a day. I do a page a day you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. so um, you do a title you put it in bold underline it you're like bang <laughs> it's practically a script put your name at one side you're like hey, 10 words the word number the pa- you just number the pages <laughs> yeah. you're like done so when I'm doing things like that I'll have like a coffee because I think I feel snazzy and at one point yeah. I thought god I'd love a pair of glasses just to do this and then, then I thought right I must be really bored if I'm trying to sort of compromise my eyesight just so I look smarter yeah so that's that's where I'm at with the the tea and caffeine situation. So are you like are you new to tea? Like what what was the reason for not drinking caffeine? Was it like a religious thing or anything? It's obviously religious. No, yeah. but uh, I um I think years ago I used to drink a lot of coffee. Like was it uni and stuff like that? Because it's sort of thing to do. You're like mm, I'm gonna get a coffee, so you just feel like a bit of a gag. Yeah. Um, a, a bit way. of a what? A bit of a gag. Is it a dairy thing? Yes. Well, a it gack? must be a, a gag. A bit of a gag. Have you never heard of gag? No. What does it mean? Well, gack, it can be like if you're a gack, you sort of, why can I never explain these things? I don't always use these words. A gack's like like an Egypt. Oh, okay, Egypt. yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, gack, very, I like it though. It's a very specific dairy Egypt, I suppose. Ah, uh, uh, okay, gack. okay. Yeah, yeah, I get, but I get Again, like with all phrases like that, you can use them endearingly as well. Do you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, So I, so I just I stopped, I just drunk too much. I have a tendency to rub the arse out of everything. Like, if I like it, I'm like, right, I'm going to do it every five minutes for the rest of my life. And then a week in, it's the worst. I don't know with green tea. I tried to drink eight cups a day because I had some really bad advice online. Eight, eight cups a day? Yeah, don't do that. It's terrible. Yeah, who, who was the advice from? Because I feel like it wasn't a doctor. The internet. So. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> isn't it weird that sometimes you read something on the internet and you go, God, that's like good advice. I should do that. Yeah. But sometimes it's just on a forum. You know what I mean? It could just be... It could could just be some guy in a shed, you know, and I'm like, oh, fair enough. I've got to take vitamin D now. You know, I, I don't know <laughs> You're why. Like, oral you're day. Mm. You're like, yeah. I've never ever, I've never had it my entire life, but suddenly if I don't drink eight cups a day, I'm going to collapse. I mean, I didn't you know think I mean? we'd get this quickly into like, you clearly have a, a problem pass with tea. Um, but eight cups a day, what what was the, um, what were the side effects of that? So I didn't actually quite make it to eight cups a day because who could? Um, I'll be honest, I just thought it was a really easy way to, um, like lose weight as most people think they do you know this is years ago without right, right. having to get off my arse and off the couch like yeah. just like a cup of it just falls off yeah. um that doesn't happen obviously right. but um i just know if i drink it i just uh, instantaneously vomit it's just got, it's oh well then yeah stop i mean this is what it is it's apparently someone told me there's something in it that um it can do something to your stomach i don't know what it is but um it just instantly now just if i have it it's just like I did it on set one day years ago on a job I was on, a cup of green tea, and I was just sat there, and it was just me on in the shot. They lined up, and obviously it takes ages and blah, blah, blah. And they were just sitting there, and I was like, ah. Oh. And I could just feel it coming. I was like, ah. Oh. And had to run, vomit, and just come back. So I had a, a problem on set once. I was doing a thing for CBBC, right? And Okay, terrible place I, to have a problem on set. <laughs> yeah, 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 because everyone's so like everyone's so happy and loving life yeah. and so enthusiastic. And I was like, no, we need to panic here. So I had a <laughs> I had a problem uh, because of something in catering, um, but it wasn't. I wasn't going to bring it up. You know what I mean? Like it was a different. Mm. It was a different situation. It was a different problem. Um, was it gonna, but, down yeah, the ways? Yeah, 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 yeah. Green tea can do that as well. It's a nightmare. Well, I don't think I'd, I. I think I'd had like a soda with like bacon, egg, and something else, and like. I, I remember being halfway through a scene and being like, oh no. And, <laughs> and it was it was in an old house. It was in this castle in Killy Lay. Um, and the, weirdly, the toilets didn't have like walls at the top. Like you ever go into those toilets and it's like a wall up, but the wall doesn't go to the ceiling. So there's a gap. Um, I was <laughs> in, in a castle? In, a, in, a, in an old castle. And I was in there. And then there was someone else from the production. I didn't say what I was going to do. I was like, oh, can you excuse me for a minute? Yeah. And the director came out and said, um, who, who's, is someone in there? And, and I lied and said I was another actor. In it, <laughs> who, he, was a, he was a guy called Lee from Bolton. And I put on a wee bit of an accent. And I was like, uh, yes, yeah, Lee, mate. And uh, to, to this day, that director the Lee walks thinks, past and he's like, 
I, I told Lee about this, and he was he was kind of okay about it. He was kind of mm. okay about it. What's your um, what's your like lockdown situation then? Are you? I mean, I just presume you live in Derry, but you may what you could live literally anywhere in the world. I have no idea. I just um, well, let's just say I live somewhere fancy in in our minds. But no, I'm in I'm in Derry at the moment, back home. Um, I because my sister just had a baby as well. Oh, a nice. What you have? Uh, she had a wee girl. Oh, nice. I know. I'm all constantly under strict instructions. Do not talk about my family and friends. And then as soon as I'm on, I'm like, by the way, here's <laughs> all the shoe sizes. Pictures, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, I haven't actually physically seen her properly. She came past in the car oh, yeah, with the yeah, window yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a bit, it's a bit strange, but, um, but it's nice to be home. And again, I suppose it's just nice to be somewhere familiar with all the, the madness that's going on. Because actually, I was filming in South Africa about four days before the lockdown actually well about a week oh, before okay. the lockdown happened so um i was doing a film there and i came back it was all sort of talked about it was i think it was in china and i think it just was coming towards italy but there wasn't any big measures in place and everybody was it was still sort of like is this going to spread is it that big of a deal blah 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 they were still saying well compared to like sars and stuff and saying well it didn't yeah, go yeah. that bad yeah. And then I got home and about five days later, the lockdown happened. I was like, jeez, thank God. At, at that point, you're talking about everyone was just on the internet taking advice from forums being like, I know tea. they say, if you, if you cut a potato in half and rub it in your elbows, you're not going to get it. And then that's it. To the potato. What was the, uh, what was South Africa? What was South Africa? Like, was that cool going out and doing a film? There? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, I stayed in like a wee town outside um, Cape Town. It was called yeah. Stellenbosch. Um, and it's one of the best wineries in the world. So, Hello, right? So, so I've just got into wine in the last maybe six months. Again, somebody told me for health benefits. Um, and I know yes. this guy who's like a PT, and I met him to like get like a bit of a, a consultation. And he goes, and he was like, wine. The, the two things he said, he goes, uh, I would really consider getting into wine. And there was, there was something else like like that, you know. Uh, yeah. And, and he's like, honestly, red wine's really good for you. Just start love wine it. and coffee. That's how I got in the coffee. Um, right. So I just started drinking red wine for health reasons. And uh, I love it. I, I love, it. love, love, love red wine. Like, I'm, I really want to try and drink white because I just think you don't get that, you know, that sort of red wine go. Yeah, yeah. You get that. And that's usually about three quarters down the bottle when everything's getting a bit wee. And then you're yeah. like, hey. And it's just like, whoa, <laughs> sit over there. But you're too sort of sloshed to care. Um, but I I got into it myself because I was a big beer drinker for years, beer and Guinness, and still would be a wee bit. Um, and then a few years ago, then I switched I switched to wine because I thought it was all the same. But it's it's really really lovely. So I'm still at the point where I can't tell the difference between wines. Every, everybody's at that point. I'm sorry, like most people I would say are at that point. I pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I don't. Like if I I pick a wine, I'll go. Mm, I have a little Mel- Melbeck. Yeah. Oh, very fancy. Yeah. But then if I'm at the house and somebody was to pour me something else, I wouldn't know the difference. I wouldn't go, that's the one I chose. Yeah. I think, I mean, really? I, feel, I feel like I should have eat a bit like you with the green tea, I should ease myself into it. Like, I think I should have gone Lambrini. Like, I didn't really, <laughs> you know, like, I didn't do like Prosecco and stuff. Like, like I could definitely see myself getting into that scene. Like that. But you know, I didn't either. I, I just went straight for a, a red wine. I had one glass and then the next time I tried it, I had like three quarters of a bottle. But to be fair about... Jesus, it was years and years ago. I did have one attempt at wine and put me off. My cousin brought up, it was me and my sister and my cousin, and it was three bottles for a tenner. Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know it's going to be from, you know it's going to mm. be a, a vintage a vintage bottle. Yes. You know what I mean? Tuscany <laughs> somewhere, I think she got it. But it was... Uh, <laughs> or Twinbrook. One of the <laughs> <laughs> she, it was, she was had one bottle of white, a bottle of rosé and a bottle of red because my sister didn't really drink wine either at the time. So like, oh, let's, I mean, we're going to like one of them. Let's give it a go. Yeah. I had the rosé, but obviously because I was so used to drinking beer, I was just drinking it like a pint. So I was just, sure. and I think with 45 minutes, the bottle was gone. <laughs> and I remember, I'll never forget it. She was talking on the couch and I was chatting. I remember just going, whoa, like yeah. the room just, and then I was like, oh my God, it was just like an instantaneous, just hammered. And I never threw up as much in my life. I threw up so much that I went into work the next day and the girl rubbed a, a glass over my face because it's so many blotches. Oh, she, thought I had, she thought I had meningitis. <laughs> I was just there like, which is there letting her rub the glass like um you don't want to say i got hammered in a bottle oh, of wine yeah it's not a good level of drunk when someone's like i'm hungover and so like, no i think you're full-blown meningitis <laughs> i mean that's not a good i'm gonna sign. call someone i know but um i like your sister's attitude of just showing up with one of each you know definitely like don't mix your drinks your sister's just got the full range 
I mean, you just have to try your best. And that's what I thought. I thought, we'll try one of them. I had a wee sip of the red, too much. Didn't like the white, but vinegary, rosé, sweet. We'll try yeah. that. No, I, that was years ago before actually drunk drunk actual wine um i had about a five-year break after that i was physically traumatized badly um, i mean yeah the 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 like the the red mouth is definitely bad but Aye. i've noticed with with red wine i get i get so bitchy like i get really, <laughs> i'm not a bitchy person but Actually, whenever whenever like i spit the bigger the glass the bitchier Aye. i get Don't and the it. more your arms are folded you're going yeah. mm. Yeah. Mm. All I do, all I do is look out the window and just any neighbours that go past, mm-hmm, you know, like, pass comment on their fashion on on ev- on everything. Shoes, yeah, right. Yeah, I go, mm-hmm. I'm like, you just you just make noises and eyebrow raises. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Those must, must have come back into fashion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I definitely enjoy wine. Like I was thinking for a while of changing this podcast to just like wine with me podcast, but I, I think you should. If, but if I record three episodes a week, you know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna develop a we're gonna I mean, develop a problem. You usually pick a few people just to stick with you, so then everyone's the same, and it's like the norm. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So the the film that you were doing, were you were you able to fit? Like, was that scheduled to finish when it finished, or did you have to just like wrap it up and get out of there? Um, no, that's scheduled to finish. There was a few more days, I think, after I I finished with the other actors, but they got it done and, and everything. So, um, luckily enough. <clears throat> what is done. the? Can you tell me like a bit about the film, or is it is it? One yeah, they just um, have to kill you if I tell you. They just released it, um, or released not released the film, released um, the the promo for it. It's called Redeeming Love. It's an adaptation of a book, and it's set in the late eighteen hundreds in America during the Gold Rush. And I play a prostitute. So. Oh, nice! <laughs> Do you know actually when I got the part, I was telling um, my friends and stuff. I was like, I'm playing a prostitute, and they were like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They sort of crack, and I was like. Thanks. Shows up at every scene with three bottles of wine, red, Just red, there, red like, rose. <laughs> hey boys. Did you, do, did you have to do? Did you have to do? Were you an American accent in it? No, they wanted a dairy accent, my normal accent. Um, oh, they because I done the audition with two with, with the American one and then a, a dairy audition. And because of the sort of range of people there, I think they wanted to keep me Irish because it's somebody from just know different parts of the world and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So. Just to round it off, and obviously it's such a naturally beautiful accent, and so easy to understand. Sure, you know I, so, I don't, I don't know if I told you this. We 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 met about two years ago doing a um a BBC show very briefly, but I don't know if I told you this at the time. Maybe I was too embarrassed to tell you this. But speaking of like accents and and working working on productions, uh-huh. I I auditioned for De- for the first series of Dairy Girls. I think you did tell me this, and did I you? had to do a Dairy accent, and up until. I got to the place to do the audition. I was killing it. You know, if I'd if I'd a walk I around, hate that. I hate that. if I'd a walk around the Richmond Centre, people mm. would and just said hello to people. They'd been like, "That man is from Derry. Why have we never mm. seen him before?" Got to the place, started talking far more South African than it was. <laughs> it, I absolutely butchered it. I, I eventually mm. got it being somewhere okay, but I think when it like I I feel like I can do any accent, but when it comes to like somebody going you know, one-on-one, like we're recording with the cameras. I just... Uh, I just it's nerves as well, isn't it? It's, just, it's proper yeah. nerves. It's, it's, I, I done an audition years and years ago as well um, in London, and I was so nervous. I, was, I just have a big problem with nerves anyway. But um, I offered to do a different accent. Like, I offered it because I was like, nailed it, got this, my part. And they went, go ahead. And more people came into the room. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And then I was trying to do like a, I think like a Cockney accent and it went really, really Australian, <laughs> South African. Oh, yeah. And you could see, you know, when you can like, re, you can sense someone going. Yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, I've, I've wrecked it. And then I walked out and I was like, no, I have double wrecked it because I offered to do the shit accent. Like yeah. I offered to be shit <laughs> it's on camera. It's still your fault. It's still <laughs> I was like, fault. thanks. But you should have just added to the character's backstory, even though it didn't need it. And just been like, oh, no, no, she had spent time in australia for australia south africa new zealand yeah 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 she, for a yeah. while it's really complicated she can't really talk about it at the moment it's like is that is that the worst is that the worst audition experience you've ever had no my worst audition experience um but the thing is i didn't go to drama school or anything so i was winging a lot of this at the very start you know i do come from a very working class background which i'm very proud of but there is sort of um avenues you just have to sort of figure out yourself yeah. And I had, I had like a few different types of different agents. Some were struck off or terrible. Th- like just, it was a, just a nightmare at the start. I think and I know what you're talking about. There was two. So, oh. uh, 
I know, nightmare. Thankfully, I've got amazing agents now. I'm, I'm delighted. But um, yeah, so I was sort of, I, I, don't, I feel like I didn't have the, the right people to give me advice and saying this is definitely worth going or try this or, you know, you have that support system, which is really important doing this job. You'll know yourself and just having someone to call and say, is this worth doing or blah, blah, blah. So I was living in Manchester at the time and I had to get the bus down to, to London, which is five and a half hours because I was about skint. So it was like, what? Megabus? Megabus. I think it was a makeup, whatever. No, I was a coach. Got fancy. Oh. Uh, I know. And I thought I'd treat myself to the coach. Um, <laughs> got down there. I was really nervous, obviously. Just And they, ha- they had me prepare um, an English accent, like a posh London accent. That was fine. Nailed it down the bus. Got in there. And um, they handed me the size. I was like, no, I've got everything's fine. They were like, actually, there's been a bit of a change. We need you to do your own accent. And I was like, all right, okay. And I was like, oh, that's fine. She's actually, can you do a West Country accent? And I was like, um, sort of. And she's like, okay. And this is, can you do a mix of the two? And I was like, Irish West Country? Um, that doesn't exist. It's not a thing. But of course, a young actress was like, yes, of course I can do it. I was born to do it. And then I'm there like, oh, trying to. So you get into the audition. I was doing it. There was a, the ca- this assistant was there with the camera and the girl who was casting it was there. And I'm sure they were very lovely people. But um, I obviously was doing a terrible job because the only thing I was focusing on was the, this weird alien accent. And I was doing the audition and then she her phone rings in the middle and she gets up and walks out. She answers it. She's like, hi, babe. Yeah. And just walks out. And I was like, oh, my heart. <laughs> and the guy behind the camera goes, keep going. I was oh, like, no. oh. <laughs> they might as well just went, you're shit. Can we just stop? Just get out. You know? And yeah. then it was a five and a half hour trip back. Yeah, I I think you're right about whenever you first like, and I'm I'm probably still at the stage where it's like, you know, figuring a lot of a lot of things mm-hmm. out for myself. But I remember whenever I was 18, me and my mate, and I'd done like no acting at this point. I still haven't done that much, but I hadn't done any. And me and my mate got the bus to London from Belfast. You know, like the ferry Jesus. and then the bus to audition for Skins. Remember Skins was on. Chelsea? I love that. I I that's right. So you go over, they put you in the like groups of eight. Basically, everybody is from England and most people are like acting school trained, um, yes. which, which I'm also like, if you can tell if you've seen me in anything, I'm not. So Shut up. They go, <laughs> <I'm the same>. <laughs> <laughs> they, go uh, they go, right, we're going to put you in the groups of like eight. So I feel like everyone knows each other. Nobody can understand my accent as well. It's one of those mm. things where I feel a bit left out. I'm also like a wee bit older than everyone. I'm 18. Everyone's maybe like 16, 17. Anyway, during this scene, they go, okay, guys, it's a house party. And do you remember the Claxons, the band, the Claxons? They yeah. Some golden scans. They turn that up and everybody, there's about 200 people in the room and they're, you're watching everyone else audition. They turn it up and go, all right, guys, really get involved in the music. I I don't I don't I don't dance right. Well, like, like I yeah. I do. If they'd have told me to prepare a choreograph routine, I would have blown them all away. But yeah. it w- I ended up doing like very like dad dancing <laughs> was ju- as an eighteen year old. And yeah. the worst thing is being halfway halfway through a bad audition and knowing that you've got to get a bus twenty one hours back to <laughs> Belfast is just such a. But we had it like we had a good time on the trip because we Aye. me and my mate enjoyed how shit our additions were. Mm. But like, yeah, oh, I've done some really, I've done some really, really bad ones. I mean, Aye. but yeah, I would have gone in for <clears throat> anything. And I think you're right. You need anything. you need people to go look. What is it you actually want to do? And then yes. push it towards that. Or can you even do this accent? Or they might throw something else at you or blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. I had no one really to ring and go, they've met, like they've changed the accent. Or there was, apparently there was an issue with the, the sending out the, um, the casting notes or whatever it was. But there's nobody to ring. They were just like, yeah, just, just do it. And obviously spend five and a half hours in the bus. I'm going to go in yeah. for the world's worst audition. Mostly on my part and then back. I mean, everybody lies like on their on their acting CVs. That I mean, every actor in the world every can horse ride. CV. Everyone can horse ride. I, I I've definitely put myself forward as like a fencer, like stage fighting. fighting. Yep, that's what I want. Anything. I mean, Do you I know? don't know what I would be cast in for fighting, <laughs> but I've done some real bad ones. I auditioned for this sci-fi thing in Belfast mm. twelve times. Like they kept. Right. I was seeing that as a compliment that's like they keep getting me back they must want me and then my <laughs> mate dave was like no they've had you in 12 times and you haven't got it like there's no there's nothing good about this yeah 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 love yourself more and, and i was like it. i'm never going back and they were like look we need like space guard four i went i'm your <clears> man sippers <throat> let me really quickly interrupt the podcast just to bring you our quick charity message for this week 
we normally have a sponsor for the podcast, but with lockdown, it's obviously a really bad time for that sort of thing. We don't have sponsors at the minute. Uh, it's a tough time for businesses, but it's also a real tough time for charities and fundraising. So we thought we'd give a platform to a different cause every week. Last week in the podcast, I mentioned that I'd gone to the hospital to get my regular infusion for having Crohn's disease to get my medication. And I was up in the Royal, met some brilliant nurses and doctors in there. One of those uh, brilliant people has emailed me for this week's charity appeal, which is brilliant. This comes from uh, Lisa, who was working on reception when I went to hospital at the time. She is um, a volunteer for Extern, which is a a, a charity. Um, Very quick bit of info about them. They support people who are homeless, people living with mental health issues, and young people and families with difficult challenges to help them begin to change their lives. You can go on their website, which is extern.org, to find out way more about what they do. Um, they've got a corona sh- coronavirus hardship appeal, which is easy for me to say, uh, on extern.org, and they were wondering if I could include it in one of our podcasts. Well, we've just done that. They are um, trying to use, uh, raise funds to support people who are homeless and offer them basic uh, basic things so that they can stay in, uh, like phones, so that they can stay in touch uh, with families and help to provide food hampers and electric or heating for vulnerable individuals and family. Lisa, cheers for that. Extern.org. If you want to head over there, have a look. If you're in a position to uh, make a small donation, I'm sure they would really appreciate that. Back to the pod with Jimmy Lee O'Donnell. Um, um, So what, what, what else are you, what else are you like working on? Did you, did you do much stuff before lockdown that's maybe like in production or... (laughs) Um, well, the movie, um, and before that, I had to take a wee bit of time off. I wasn't well for a while. I was a wee bit sick. So, because um, I was doing a play in Dublin, and then uh, I took sick down there. So, I was off for ages last year. So, I had to turn some stuff down and, and just sort of take a bit of time for myself to get better. It's a very long, depressing story, so we'll not get into it now. Okay. Um, it's very depressing. But well, as, long as, as long as you're feeling better now. but I am, thankfully. See what you're saying about, like, um, you know, like you need to take a bit of time off and stuff. Did you from this is just outside in kind of thing, but once Dairy Girls kind of started, have you just been like on the go since then? Was that kind of like boom? um it was a bit of both, I think, after it came out initially. I think all of us found it um we assumed it would be right away. And I think it was sort of different times for for all of us. And I think there was actually another actress who was telling us, you know, was saying you know, don't be disheartened if it's not straight away because these are such big characters and it's going to take people a bit of time just to see slightly separately and to see in different roles and things like that which is which sort of um is fair enough but um thankfully everybody's been busy and everyone's doing bits and pieces and uh we were due to film the third season um today no ah. n- no next week next week ah, okay. but um that's obviously been put off but um uh, we were all really busy enough, thankfully, doing all di- all sorts of things and different bits and pieces. So, what what ki- what kind of thing is it you you do? Is is there something like you do want to do? Is there something like you're working towards, or or a certain type of role where you're like, yeah, this is this is what this is what I really want to do? Um, I think I really want to. I really would love to do some sort of kitchen sink drama, some real sort of gritty drama stuff. I, I do think because um, for years when I'd done like theatre and things like that it was always drama I never really did a lot of comedy I just was naturally sarcastic in the house and just being told to shut up so I was like well, that's not going to go anywhere yeah. so you just kind of you put that in the back burner um, and now obviously after Derry Girls I'm getting a lot of um, comedy auditions which I appreciate as well but I think I would love just to really get stuck into some proper proper drama as well just just especially on the level of Derry Girls that would be a dream so um and thankfully, I've got uh, just signed with an agency in LA and a management company in LA. So Class. when this is all over, I'm probably going to head out there for a wee while and see what the crack is. I couldn't. I, I mean, yeah, like I I first knew about you from from Derry Girls, and the I couldn't believe you said you 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 have like with auditions and stuff, you have a confidence problem because I guess if I think of you as that character, you mm-hmm. know, it's just like supreme confidence, but. Then you have to realize that, yeah, I guess that 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 mm. is a that is a character. Um, yeah. When when you f- is it weird doing Derry Girls, but and and also being from Derry? Like, are you the only main cast member actually from Derry? Uh, Sirius from Derry, who plays Erin. She's right. from Derry as well. <clears throat> um, it's at the start, it was very surreal because I think growing up and and having this accent and being from here and wanting to be an actor, you're like, we're constantly told to get rid of our accent or soften it or, you know, just always like, you know, even if you're good, you know, that accent might hold you back or blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I was always told things like that. So then for the show to be so successful and to be from here and have this accent, it, it was really overwhelming at the start. It was brilliant and it was brilliant, but it was very like, 
it, it was just mad. It was a mad sort of um, a mad feeling. Like when me and Sarah should both said, you know, people trying to do our accents to us now. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. just so weird. Usually it's, you know, it's the other <laughs> way around or whatever, but it's, it's, it's brilliant. Was it a wee bit suffocating in a way, the, the quick success of Derry Girls and the fact that you were <clears throat> still living in Derry? Like I can tell you, you, like, mm. you, lo- you love being from Derry, love the city, but I imagine for the other cast members, you know, going away and then, and then coming back must be great, mm. but, but you're kind of always in it. So like, I'm sure you get like so Aye. many people sort of coming up to you. and, <clears throat> and, and I will. Kind of thing. I think um, it's, it, is, it is overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. It can be, especially at the start, it was really intimidating um, because everybody thinks they're meeting Michelle. So they think they're meeting this mad 16-year-old that's going to yeah. start a conversation about fingering and <laughs> shots and all sorts. Yeah. So whenever they meet me, I think there's a, a few people have been about like, they're sort of waiting for Michelle to come out. And I'm like, hello. And they're like, oh, this is what disappointing. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? It's just, it's one of those things. And I can understand why people think that. People love the character and I'm, I'm really delighted with that. But um, it, it can be overwhelming sometimes, especially if I'm with um, my family and friends uh, or my, my uh, boyfriend and we're out. People sometimes can just plant themselves beside, you know, in a restaurant or something and they're not for getting up. They're just yes. want to have a, they're really excited and they want to have a chat and they're sitting for the chat and you're a bit like, uh, do you know what I mean? So things like that, I think people get, obviously there's a lot of people who are really nice, but there's people who get really excited as well and, and, um, and do things like that where it's about. Like having a, having a mural in your own city dedicated to you must be a bit mad has the, mad. the novelty of that worn off at all like do you ever sometimes go past that and not look at it i try not to go past it because do you know in case what people it? think you're you're hanging about at it i'm just like oh. So this, oh wow how weird i'm just down here but um i did actually whenever i see whenever the first one of the first times i saw i saw it my sister was driving and it was at night and i came out and um i just came back from dublin go to the car and i got a couple of pictures and we went to get back and these people were coming down to get pictures beside it and as we were driving i felt bad i should have stopped and, and, and got out but i was driving away and they were like <gasps> as i was driving i was like oh they just they just saw i should have got out but they were we were way on the car but um but it is mad uh i walked past it there was one time a few months back um and my friend's son, Jax, by the hand, and he's four. And I, we were like, just run past quickly because, you know, we don't want to cause any, any baller. And he went, Jimmery, Jimmery, are you really loud? And I was like, shh, <laughs> on the way past. So don't take children by it. <laughs> yeah. Um, was the first thing you'd done on TV was Six Degrees? First? Six Degrees, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I remember loads of people talking about Six Degrees whenever I was younger because – I was probably, well, around the same age as the characters in it. But I think at that age, I probably wasn't watching a lot of television the way the, mm. the way I would now. And obviously, it was bef- kind of before social media. So Six Degrees was this, like, everybody my age <clears throat> and, like, a bit younger knows Six Degrees. But it totally, like, like only now do I see bits of it and recognize so many people. You know, I'm Aye. like, I know that person. And I didn't know that person was in it. That must have been really fun. Like, what age would you have been when that? Started? I was I think I was 23 23 okay. I so um it was quite a while ago but that that was brilliant that was my first ever experience of um of tv and I remember one of my very first days on set and the way it was all set up and the camera was here and it was my turn to, it was my line so mm-hmm. they were um, getting my shot so I was walking but I was walking kind of facing the camera it's something behind me like I was on stage and they were like sorry what are you doing I was like yeah. oh just because the camera's in they were like we'll just move the camera and I was like uh, well, you what? Yeah. Like, uh, the only thing I'd done before that was theater, so it was a great experience. Great experience. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that must be so much fun, like uh, being your first thing, because you're also working with people your own age as mm. well. Um, there was. Do you ever remember a thing called Shacked, which was like an Irish? Yes. Language thing? So Killian was in that, wasn't he? Killian, who played Connor in Six Degrees, I think. Is it TG Kehar? Yeah, yeah, it was on TG Cahar and filmed in Belfast and they yeah. put out a call for extras. Me and my mate went down in our college. They put it out, so we went down and I was in the background of it and someone said, guys, we need someone to do a couple of lines. Does anyone speak Irish? And I was so tempted to be like, yes. Yeah. Again, <laughs> That's one of those times you go, yes. Again with fencing and horse riding. Yeah. Do not know the language. Was fully prepared to try and be fluent <laughs> in the six minutes it took to set up the shot, but I'm I'm really glad I didn't. You said that you're um, earlier on. You said that you're like you're you're writing some stuff, but just mm. like at a slow pace, which is I think what everybody is doing. Like 
I have so many great ideas in my head that yeah. are very slowly going down, going down on paper. Have you been writing for like for a long time, or is this something that <clears throat> I've always written and I've always done bits and pieces, um, and I really enjoy it. Um, but recently I've sort of, I don't know, you just sort of doubt yourself, don't you? Especially, I'm so lucky that I have the platform of Jerry Girls and, and the agents and stuff I have. They're really supportive people and they're, they're really keen to be like, as soon as you get something, we'll try and work on this and blah, 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 and get other people involved. And I remember hearing that, it was a few months back and I just panicked and was like, ah. Oh. And then you realize, you're like, oh my God, everything I've done is shit. Oh my God. And then you just <laughs> yeah, sort of have that. It's like that sort of learning Irish in six minutes thing. You're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Why did I say I would do it? So um, finally getting rid of all that self-doubt and everything, um, I've started to focus ideas and it's not because I have a, I be a big sort of, I write bits down, like be pieces of dialogue, pieces of character, do, do, do. So when I've got these notepads after notepads full of just, it just sort of looks like somebody's just had a meltdown and well, they're that, just getting, well, you know what I mean? That's that's probably the same process as stand-up writing. You know, it's, right. it's just it's just like bits and pieces, notes on a phone when they come into yeah. your head. Like some, like I always write down notes on my phone, and then by the time I go to write them down, I like two days later, I'm like, "What on earth does this mean? What's yeah, alien? Like, ba- what's funny. alien baby bowling ball? You know what is that?" <laughs> um, but uh, but I think that's nearly the best way to write stuff because you're you're not forcing it. You know, you're just writing down I, at your own pace. And I think if I sat down at a laptop and was like, "I'm going to start mm-hmm. this script," um, I, w- I would just be forcing it too much. I mean, I uh, probably should. Like, cause there's, there's probably no some sort of structure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely do right at some point, but, but, uh, it's, I, I don't know, like at the start of lockdown, I was all like, I'm going to churn out five pages of script I a day. Really that's, that's the minimum. But, mm. uh, but like, like I reward myself too easily, you know, totally just for having the idea. Break <laughs> off, enjoy <laughs> yourself. <laughs> You, like, you like the good, glass of wine yeah when the good weather thought. when the good weather comes out i'm getting nothing done no. like i'm getting nothing done bar bar a sweet tan like that's the only thing that's it. the only thing that's happening when you when you write do you write with yourself in mind like do you write things that you see yourself being in i do sometimes um but i wouldn't write i wouldn't let that limit what i'm writing if i was writing and the character was developing which is actually happening at the moment obviously I give myself the main part but as i'm, I'm writing it turns out that that person actually isn't that interesting. And I'm like, oh, okay, just food for thought there for me. Yeah, but that's yeah. not the most interesting of the characters, I think. And as you're, as I say, like you're doing your character development and you're sort of bringing these new people and new aspects and you're really filling them out as people, you realize that it it doesn't matter if I'm on it or not because it's not, you can't, for me, you, know, you can't go into it with an ego thinking. I mean, you go into it with an ego, but it doesn't work out that way usually. And if you go on thinking... I'm just going to put like a dance number on here and get someone to teach me hip hop. I'm going to just clarinet solo. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you start that, you're just going to end up with the biggest piece of shit that no one's going to want to, want to watch yeah. or something Oscar winning. You know what I mean? I, I, I struggle to, <laughs> I love the idea of just look, don't write it for yourself. Even if you're like an actor, don't write for yourself. Like I really struggle to go. What if, what if I wasn't in this, you know, like ever pitch yeah. an idea to someone and they're like, what if they went with someone else? Would that be a problem? Like, you're you know, like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, I, it would be a problem. Yeah, you're like, we're not doing it. You just t- t- like taking your ball back. No. Yeah, they're like, I'm like, why am I not getting this rule? They're like, well, it's it's a film about LeBron James. You know what I mean? Like, you can't. And like, I go, no, guys, I'm perfect for the role. I can play basketball and also be six yeah. foot seven. You know. Yeah. And um, chat to me then about about the off the back of Dairy Girls. Um, I I noticed so much like so much fan stuff around it. So many people feeling like um, they they know the character. You talk about people thinking they know the character. Mm-hmm. Um, just the amount of like fan account. I was just having a wee look through Twitter before we started recording. Mm. Fan mm-hmm. accounts, all that sort of thing. Like I noticed it when I did the episode a couple of weeks ago with Jamie Dornan. Jamie Dornan, Brazil fans, P. Yeah. Uh, these people met, you know, when he's on the podcast, people are messaging me being like, can you get me access to him? I'm like, he's not a five side pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I'm also like, yeah, for 80 quid for sure. Um, yeah. I'm address, but, but that must be scary in a way when, when people feel they know you and with social media and stuff, I imagine it, it's great because you see how many people just love the show, love mm-hmm. your character. But um, does has there been any like without any way getting personal but has there been any like weird experiences like have you ever just been like i need to delete twitter or anything like that um there has been a couple of odd ones i mean to be fair it's mostly people you know 
saying um, we're big fans and we've a lot of people draw us. There's a lot of fan art, a lot of people who follow Dare Follow. I don't know if this happens in other shows, but the Dare Gare fans are very artistic and very creative, which is lovely to see. So, like, that's amazing. That I, I would never draw anybody. I couldn't be arsed. Like, do you, I don't care that enough about anybody, I don't think, which probably makes me feel a bit sad. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But it's so amazing, the artwork, and people take loads of time and, and they send it to us and stuff like that. And it's always great to see, and there's so much of it. Um, but there has been a couple of odd ones. Uh, there was a guy who kept messaging me and Dylan specifically, um, asking for pictures of her feet, and he'd pay us. Oh, I, I, so last week... like, the, how last, much? Th- Why is this? Right, there's a market for this, and I'm just letting anybody know watching. Yeah. I, I Give me a shout, because... I have I have faith that I'm willing to I'm willing to take Fair pictures enough. of. I yep. had um last week on the podcast Liam McCourt, who's an MMA fighter from Belfast, and kind of had the same question. You know, what about like social media? Like, what about weird fellows on social mm. media? She said the number one thing she gets is fellas saying any pictures of your feet. What is this? A, is this a new thing? Do you know what? It's I, I don't think it is. It mustn't be a new thing, but it was very, it was very weird to us that it was just specifically me and Dylan. Like, was it a cousin thing? Did they want like family feet? Well, you know, TV family feet. And um, but it's, you know how much? It's like, what are we? Don't don't start coming up with that. Like, what like are we talking? Feet, also, feet are like feet are stick. Feet are feet. Stinking. They and, are sinking. And also, yeah, like what's the price? Like, don't say. What, like, what would your price be? Honest, like, what do I need to do? To, and by the way, can I just take one picture and use that for different people, or does it have to be like they might be like they might want them flexed? <laughs> they might specific want to flex my feet. <laughs> well, you don't know who these people might want to want get create want to get creative and. Okay, um, like, I would be honestly, I'd be willing to like take a picture of my feet, send it to like a middle aged guy in Asia or wherever. Not a problem. Um, Fifty quid. 50 quid 50 quid yeah oh i'd be going well up but here's the thing definitely i think if you if you really had a high price yes you're gonna get like some people look in the pictures but i'm mm. gonna do way more pe- i'm gonna do that's I'm, it i'm quantity over quality you know what i mean like see, it's- i think i would give a ridiculously high price um and then see if they go for it because you might as well just shoot for the stars because people that are under really specific fetishes i assume have a lot of money because i can't imagine stuff's cheap like that my mate i would assume my mate uh, is does stuff on on like uh, comedy stuff online, right? Um, and about ten years ago, maybe a wee bit less, this guy messaged my mate. My mate was putting up a series of wee videos, and this guy messaged my mate, the guy in Belfast, and he said. I would love to buy. He started off with a bit of like chat at the start, and then the guy went, "Listen, mate, there's no easy way to say this." <laughs> I'd be really interested in buying a pair of your boxers. And my mate sort of laughed and the guy went, no, seriously, mate, I'll meet you in Belfast to get them off you. I'm willing to pay a good price. And I swear, I think this guy paid like 200 quid. And my mate, Tell like, him. Do you? He, he did it. He did Why it. wouldn't he? And then he's going to stick him in the wash anyway. No, and, and then he goes, about a, about a day later, he texts me and my other friend and he goes, the guy's on to me, he wants me to do like naked videos. And I was like, oh, shocker, he came back for more. Like, you're not just going to leave it at that. No, if no. that's what you get. Uh, what's, what's like, so you're like, say your inbox at the minute, what's the number one message? What's, what's like the most common message that you, you get? Um, it's probably, it's my sister's birthday or my granny's birthday. Can you send a video? It's probably the one of the, or I get a lot of, um, a lot of you know the random ones, people go on, hey, you're hot. I like your eyes. I like the way they see. <laughs> I actually had that. I like your eyes. I like the way they see. How I'm assuming that was his accent. You know what I mean? Like, oh, thanks. How do you know how your eyes see? You know, but... They see great. It's fine. <laughs> He's right. Yeah. I mean, peop, you know, the idea of art, like I like it because mm-hmm. I, li- I would like to be drawn really well, like, like um, <laughs> Kate Winslet and Titanic, like really, really Yeah, you're like well. perfect or fuck off. That's yeah, it. because I'm scarred. I remember going to Tenerife whenever I was about eight <laughs> and this, the character, you know, the guys that draw you on mm. the street, this, this guy drew me and he really fucking, he really crushed me as a child. Like he, <laughs> he, he exaggerated every feature I have. Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck that guy. Still really, really pissed off about that. Um, so you've just done the film in South Africa. The trailer for that's come out. Um, mm. What, I was going to say, do you know what like the next like year looks like? Is it a case of like no one knows at the minute? Um, I think no one knows. Um, I think 
it's just gonna it's just a play by ear. There was stuff that was on the cards that I don't know if it is anymore because I would assume now I've no way of knowing this, but I would assume priority would be to things that are have been missed schedule wise yeah. and things that have been cancelled and maybe things that are ongoing series or ongoing Emmerdale. movies and things like that. Emmerdale, straight away. Things like that. I would assume I don't I don't know. You know, I write a bit. If you're looking for projects post lockdown, mm-hmm. like would you consider, for example, this just off the top of my head, would you consider space detectives? Space detectives? Yeah. Do you have to get my feet out? Because it's going to be really expensive for you if I do. No, because you're, go- you're, you're kind of going to be in a space suit. Um, space right. detectives would be um, you in space. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, it's the first time I'll go, I see myself being in it. But if, okay. if it was the difference between a commission or not from like Netflix, I'll let someone else play the part. But you're going to have to. Like, we don't know what's in space. We don't know if there's crimes going on up there. There, there should be. Get the space detectives on it. So Right. I mean, I mean it's, it, a, it's a solid idea. I mainly have, it's mainly the title at the minute that I'm, I, I like, but I, I don't really have the thing yet. But, um, or Underwater Cricket, would you be? I would be more inclined to do the space, space detectives. detectives. Just can cause I put you down for space detectives? Put me down for the lead or nothing. Lead or yeah, you can it, F off. Yeah. It's yeah, how, yeah. how I'm going to approach this. And if you yeah. want feet, you're, we're going to have to have a different conversation. It's going to be very expensive. Yeah. I mean, do you think I should just like start putting pictures on my feet up to just like really like just speed the process along? Because well, I don't know I how think... long it's going to wait for me to be like a, a star on like TV or film or whatever. This is it. I think what you should do is put up a toe or two. Don't give away the farm. Do you know what I mean? Definitely not my baby toe. It re- that, I, I, I if it's gross, put, don't do that. Oh, it's so bad. Like every other toe I have is spot on. Like spot on. Yeah. Not to, by the way, some people will be loving this chat. Some people are oh like, my God. Yes, keep, I've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> All my toes are fine, right? And I don't want yeah. this to put people off. All my toes are fine. Apart from my baby toe, which is kind of like leaning in to listen to what the rest of you are <laughs> talking about. Like, it's not good. It's just bent on your shoes for years. Like, you've wore the wrong size shoes since yeah. school. But the thing is, that's like the niche. That could be your thing. That's your, that's your calling card. That's your trademark. They're like, well, that's Shane Todd's feet. I know. Because yeah, look at the weirdest toes. No, I mean, you're starting to, that's, you're basically calling me a freak is what, is what you're doing at the minute. But, but I could also like be that. your, ma- I could be your manager. I feel like that's yeah. what's happening. I'm going to get you absolutely loads of dough with your wee dodgy feet. Because my feet, are, my feet are just are small and sort of stumpy. My, I've got stumpy toes. Do you right. know what I mean? I, mean, Did you ever I see... don't think we put that on the ad for your picture. No, <laughs> Short and yeah. stumpy. Short and stumpy. I think that's, that just describes me just in general. But um, I think go with the feet thing. Don't give away the farm right away. Yeah, Let, yeah, yeah. Get the... No, um, I'll give them for for eighty quid. They get the they get the whole they ranch. Get the <laughs> they get they the get whole ranch. <laughs> the everything. <laughs> All right, that's definitely weird. Um, yeah, weird well, and important. Weird, weird, and I mean, if I don't, if I get known for anything, if it's my fate that gets me in the door. Yes, that's great. Great story. Great origin story. That's you know all. I mean? That's all that matters. I mean, I feel like we have covered a lot of. That's what. This is why it was difficult for me to let you know what kind of things I'm going to ask you on the on the podcast. Yeah. I'm gonna. This is my final question. What's your most hated question? What's the stock question people ask in interviews, and you're like, I just can't. Ant- I can't answer this anymore. Um, there was a. To be fair, after Derek Gage comes out, there's like a stock five or six that you're, at, you're asked in every single interview, and I ended up. It was almost like you'd be like robotic mode. I'm just answering, and then I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth. But one of them is always um. So, something along the lines of like, whose career do you really want to emulate, or what sort of, you know who is really successful now that you want to be and you're like I always want to be like I just want to be the first me but you don't want to sound like an absolute twat at all I just want to be me but that's true yep. like there's a lot of careers I think are brilliant and I would be lucky to have them but you sort of want to pave your own way and do your own thing and, and also I think you don't want to set yourself up for failure in any way do you know what yep. I mean yeah because you take the opportunities as they come but that's one that I always get asked I never know how to answer I never have somebody in mind that can go bang maybe I should just think about it more what about um, Julia Roberts? Great career. I'll take that. No problem. There's, but that's a the thing. There's about a million of them. I'll just be like, yeah, that's great. I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, do you know who I'd like to be is um, a bit niche, this one, but Andy Peters. <laughs> My man the... Andy Peters on Good Morning Britain <laughs> every morning. Just doing the... He, all he does is the competition. Um, he's, he's, he's round the... He, oh, aye. He, like? he did he do Blue Peter? 
he did Blue Peter, and I think he might have done Live and Kicking. Do you know what else he does? I think he does the voiceover stuff for whenever you're flying with Emirates, do the wee on flight TV. He yeah. does the voice for that. Andy I, remember Peters. I was coming back to the Africa and I was like, I'm sure I know that voice. I mean, the Emirate, like the Emirate family, or like that own the, the, the Emiratis, like. They are, I don't know if that's, the Emiratis is, is, is a proper term, right? It is, but it's fine. The royal family of the Emirates, I don't know if they're royal, right? But essentially, the, the lads that own it, let's call them that, they yeah. are like, they're one of the richest groups of people in the world. I just, I mean, I'm not slagging any beers off, like as I said, I want to be them, but yeah. I just think it's weird that they would go, we need a, we need a real voice that people are going to know here. Come on, I need a real guy, the people, who can we? Do we get Morgan Freeman? No. <laughs> Let's get my man Andy Peters. <laughs> I would I would love to be Andy Peters. Um he's 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 great. What what about okay, Space Detectives? Mm-hmm. You and Andy Peters, the leads. I'll just I'll I'll play like fifth lead or sixth lead or whatever. Are you worried it's gonna to be too sexy though? You know what I'm saying? With you me, and Andy, Andy Peters. Peters. I'm gonna say this. Andy Peters is in ph- phenomenal shape. You're not gonna believe me, so I'll show you. Uh by the way, I don't have it saved or whatever. Yeah, you do. I'm gonna have it's to it's fine. But I'm just going to show you. You're uh, like, boop, boop, boop. You're all pro- Googling. <laughs> you probably get this in uh, interviews all the time. People, people showing you Andy Peters' physique. But Andy Peters is absolutely ripped. Like, the man is in serious shape. Would I, would I Google Andy Peters' body? Yeah. Why not? Okay. I swear you're not going to believe this, right? Let's go. Let's see it. <laughs> <clears throat> what do you think of that? Well, well, yeah. well, mother may. I? Speaking of competitions, if the competitions for the, for the sexiest guy on earth, Andy Peters has just won it. Fair play. I see why you want to be him. I want to be him now after that. Space detectives, you, me, Andy Peters. Peters. Has top off, my socks off. Boom. Yep. And, uh, and just my freak face. Just you in the background, do, speaking Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Just Irish accent. That's what that's all I was going to do. If I so got that Yeah. Just that. Yeah, man of three words. Thank you very much for uh, doing the podcast, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Um, Thanks very much for having me. Give, give Green Tea another chance. Um, but Let's slowly just... but surely, I think you just went, I think you just sold the farm. You just went in way Rub the hole. Straight out You did. But That's cheers. Style. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing the podcast. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it. Bye. 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 Sippers, there we'll have it. The Tea With Me podcast episode with Jamie Lee O'Donnell. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. We, we've been we've been lucky to have such brilliant guests on the on the podcast. Um, that's another one, and uh, I appreciate every every guest that comes on and gives up their time. Um, it, it's it's really appreciated. I I enjoy, enjoyed that episode. Loved talking to Jamie Lee. Hopefully, she'll be up for doing the podcast again at some point because uh, I think the Sippers will will have enjoyed that one. If you did enjoy the podcast, you want to subscribe on the likes of Apple Podcasts, that would be great. That really helps us shoot up those charts. You know, we hit the uh, top 40 in the in the Apple Podcast charts, which is, which is incredible because it's still a fairly new podcast. So uh, all, all the love that you give it is, um, is really, really appreciated. I am excited to do these episodes every couple of days. I think every couple of days. I think you can tell that. You know, I, I get a wee bit giddy when I do these and... Uh, and it's just like chatting to friends, you know, it, it really is, even when I'm doing the solo episodes. Solo episode on Friday, uh, as always, just me talking nonsense, um, and then on Monday, the Patreon episode, patreon.com slash tea with me podcast, that's how you can support the podcast, you sign up for that, you get some nice benefits, and uh, and you also get uh, a whole bonus episode on a Monday with me and producer Dan. This week, we are talking about stand-up, so... Dan, we're kind of turning the tables a bit and the hunter is becoming the hunted uh producer dan's kind of interviewing me a wee bit about stand up and and you know with 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 del deep with del deep i think it was it was a it was a good episode thank you very much for listening or watching thanks to jamie lee for doing that what a what a star absolutely brilliant great person to talk to um i have no doubt that anything she does will be will be brilliant and it'll be really cool to see um see how how the writing goes as well you know someone who uh likes to write comedy and you know things for tv or film and that's something i'm getting more into and i really have to get the finger out and do more in lockdown um it'd be great to see her writing so so hopefully we can hopefully we can all have stuff that we write turn into turn into actual things 
that'd be great. But uh, yeah, Jamie Lee, absolute, absolutely brilliant support. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. See you on Friday for the solo episode. Wednesday, we'll be back with another guest. I actually don't know who it is. I do know who it is. I do know who it is. And, uh, and yeah, it'll be good. Cheers. Thank you very much, sippers. Keep drinking tea. Keep supporting the podcast. Sip, sip.